Welcome to Dermatology Explained. Today's video presentation is on Pityriasis rotunda. This is the next video on our video series on papulosquamous disorders. Pityriasis rotunda was first described by Toyama in 1906 as Tinea circinata or Pityriasis circinata and was later renamed Pityriasis rotunda by a Japanese doctor, Matsura. It is a rare disease characterized by round, oval, scaly pigmented patches, which are usually found on the trunk, arms, and legs. We'll go into this into more detail later, but pityriasis rotunda may be associated with systemic diseases such as hepatocellular carcinoma. There has been no clear unifying cause identified for pityriasis rotunda. It has been hypothesized that pityriasis rotunda is associated with a malnutrition state, which may be the final common pathway for patients with underlying infectious diseases or malignancies. Some authors have proposed that pityriasis rotunda represents a minor acquired ichthyosis that can be familial and as such have attached it to various disorders of keratinization, including ichthyosis vulgaris, a late onset congenital ichthyosis, and acquired ichthyosis. In some cases, it is thought to represent a paraneoplastic process associated with cancers such as hepatocellular carcinoma, particularly in South African patients of skin of color. In terms of the epidemiology, there is a slight female predominance. It is usually diagnosed in people aged 20 to 45 years of age and is described primarily in the Far East in countries such as Japan and China, the Mediterranean basin, including Morocco, Italy, and Israel, and in Africans, African-Americans, and Afro-Caribbeans in the UK. There are some familial cases reported which have a autosomal dominant inheritance. There are thought to be two types of pityriasis rotunda. In type one, these cases are usually of either Oriental or African-American background in patients older than 60 years of age. Type one pityriasis rotunda is associated with internal disease or malignancies, including hepatocellular carcinoma, active tuberculosis and other pulmonary diseases, chronic benign hepatic disease, other malignancies including lung carcinoma, CML, squamous cell carcinoma, aerodigestive, as well as nutritional or malnutritional states. In type two pityriasis rotunda, these are in cases who are less than 40 years of age, are often familial and are not associated with internal disease or malignancy. In terms of the features of pityriasis rotunda, the appearance of the lesions are mostly similar regardless of the type of pityriasis rotunda. It is uncommon in people who have white skin. Pityriasis rotunda presents with asymptomatic large patches, often between 0.5 to 20 cent 0.5 to 20 centimeters in diameter, can, but can be even larger. They are generally isolated. However, merging lesions can create a polycyclic shape. They have fine scale, are sharply demarcated with no clinical inflammation. The colors generally range from pink to light brown. The lesions are usually darker than surrounding skin. That is, they are hyperpigmented in patients with dark skin but they can be hypopigmented or lighter in color in patients with light skin. They are commonly situated on the buttocks, thighs, abdomen, trunk, upper and lower extremities. In type one pityriasis rotunda, these tend to have fewer lesions, less than 30, but these tend to have hyperpigmented patches that are not familial in etiology. In comparison, type 2 pityriasis rotunda tends to have multiple lesions greater than 30, which are hypopigmented or lighter in color, 
and may have a familial etiology. Here are some further images demonstrating cases of pityriasis rotunda. In the top panel, we have hyperpigmented oval plaques on the back, on the thighs as well. In the bottom panel, we have a case of pityriasis rotunda demonstrating hyperpigmented, well-defined, dry, scaly lesions on the trunk. There is a close-up view of one lesion which demonstrates the adherent ichthyosiform scale. In terms of the histology of pityriasis rotunda, it can have variable features, but there may be features similar to ichthyosis vulgaris. Pityriasis rotunda has microscopic features of ichthyosis vulgaris. In addition to an absent or diminished granular layer, there is moderate hyperkeratosis. There may be plugs within hair follicles, elongated red ridges, slight spongiosis, enhanced pigmentation of the basal layer, pigment incontinence, and perivascular infiltrate. The PAS stain test is often negative for fungi. In terms of the differential diagnosis for pityriasis rotunda, this includes congenital and acquired ichthyoses, such as lamella ichthyosis and ichthyosis vulgaris. It can include fungal infections such as tinea corporis, tinea versicolor, urethrasma, pityriasis alba, pityriasis rosea, large plaque parasoriasis, and leprosy. The management of pityriasis rotunda is relatively difficult. There are trials with topical lactic acid, urea, TARS, and emollient products, as well as corticosteroids, but these have generally provided little benefit. Topical tretinoin cream 0.01% can provide modest improvement and systemic retinoids warrant consideration in patients with more extensive disease. However, particularly for type one pityriasis rotunda, it is important to identify and reverse any underlying disorder which may be triggering or contributing to pityriasis rotunda. In particular, malnutrition, infection, or malignancies should be addressed. It is important to perform a thorough review of systems and to ensure that patients are kept up to date with age-appropriate malignancy screening. In type 2 pityriasis rotunda, these cases tend to be self-limiting and often improves on its own accord through adulthood. However, the lesions may come and go in a cyclical pattern. Thank you for joining us in this video presentation today. I hope you've learned something interesting about pityriasis rotunda. Please join us in our next video in this series on papillosquamous skin disorders. Thank you.